So let's get started. Welcome everyone to today's webinar on confidently pricing your wool. This webinar is brought to you by Leading Sheep, which is a partnership between Queensland Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry, Australian Wool Innovation and Ag Force. Your presenter today is David Kotha, who is the Wool Services Manager with AWEX, the Australian Wool Exchange. Unfortunately, you may have noticed that there's been a slight change of plans and Lionel Plunkett, who was originally our presenter, was not able to be with us today. However, David is a very experienced presenter with many years experience with the Australian Wool Corporation in brokering, wool appraisal and selling systems, as well as with AWEX in the AWEX ID appraisal scheme development, market information and electronic selling and wool classing. With this background, I'm sure David will be more than capable of delivering this presentation, helping you to understand wool check and answering any questions you may have. Today David will be covering wool check measurements, which ones are used in wool check and why, how to use wool check to confidently price your wool and how you can use the information on what your wool is worth. So I will now hand over to David. Thank you, Nicole, and welcome everybody uh, to the presentation this afternoon on using WoolCheck. Uh, I'd like to open the session today with a, uh, a bit of background about WoolCheck. WoolCheck was uh, is uh, a joint initiative with the Australian Wool Exchange uh, and Australian Wool Innovation. WoolCheck was uh, was uh, born, if you wish. Um, from a request from Australian Wool Innovation, AWI, back in 2006. And the motive at the time was to offer um, an opportunity for uh, growers particularly to access market information that allowed them to uh, better price, well, not better price, but to give them independent pricing of their wool. So structurally, it's, it's, it's an initiative of Australian Wool Innovation. It's funded by Australian Wool Innovation. The back end in terms of the price and the data coming out of Wool Check comes from the AWEX market information um, servers. Its objective principally is to allow a user to price their wool. It allows the user to look at similar lots, lots in the auction to um, uh, you know, to look at the at the real data behind the pricing systems, and to form their own view. Uh, there's some charting tools that allow uh, the user to look at a single lot or or, or a clip uh, value over over a period of time, and there's some additional uh, premium and discount style information that allows the users to look at. Um, uh, the impact of, of, a, of a price um, on each qualifier. So principally that's the um, purpose of WoolCheck. Um, it is a web-based tool. It's online 24 hours a day, hopefully, seven days a week, and um, is accessed by um, going to uh, www.woolcheck.com.au. Now, Woolcheck uh, is an online web-based pricing tool, and I think it's important to to put in context where it fits um, in terms of advice or information relative to other advice and information. Um, it's intended to be complementary. It's not intended to be competitive with the information supplied by um, a broker. Um, it's a different style of information. Broker valuations on lots are, are, are an essential part of the marketing chain and uh, we'll check in its own right can't replace and won't replace that uh, marketing, specialist marketing advice that a broker will um, provide to a grower, particularly 
you know, how reading the play on the market, whether it's a good time to enter the market, whether it's a good time to exit the market, that's information that Woolcheck uh, cannot supply. It's 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 information that uh, uh, is is best analysed by uh, the broker, um, and Woolcheck itself won't won't provide that information. It's very objective in the sense that it's it's numbers, it's crunching numbers and allows you to look at the numbers and then you have to form a view. So it, in itself it doesn't provide advice, but it does provide uh, objective information which you can um, make form a view on. Now in terms of using access, accessing WoolCheck, it is free, it's a, it's a decision support tool that's free. Um, it's a web-based tool. We recommend using Internet Explorer, but we'll, it will use any uh, any browser type. It will work on a dial-up connection, and I'm not sure how many how many to the, how many people today actually will still use dial-up. But certainly, six years ago when we started, it was still alive and well in in rural Australia. Um, so the, the screens themselves are fairly light. They don't have a lot of uh, pictures or images to slow things down. So the dial-up connection is quite um, um, the speed is quite serviceable. And when you are using the tool, it's it's certainly useful to have your information on hand, such as your um, specifications on your lots um, uh, or or some some supporting information that you know that you want to key in to to come up with a with a price. So with that clip information, that can be information from the broker. You to to drive the tool, you need to supply objective information such as your micron, uh, the micron, the VM, and the yield, staple length and strength, and some AWEX ID information, which is the non, which are the non-measured characteristics. Uh, AWEX ID itself, if, if you're a registered wool classer, you will find the AWEX ID uh, type sheet in the back of the new code of practice. Otherwise, on the website itself, there is an AWEX ID help chart um, where you can download and, and uh, look at the type, type um, structure and, and what each of the codes know, uh, actually mean. When a wool grower is accessing wool check, there's two primary methods that uh, can be used to, to price lots. Because the wool check looks at the AWEX catalog, catalog history systems, which is a record of all wool offered at auction, it's possible for the grower to retrieve uh, a, a clip already on our system that, that may have been offered or is or is about to be offered. So I will go through the, the steps on how this is done uh, a little later in the presentation. But if 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 wool is on our database, it is possible to retrieve it. The user can then accept the information as as it exists or modify it slightly. If the, if for example the uh, um, the season's been a little bit uh, better and everything is a bit broader this year. It, in a scenario sense, it might be able to up the micron a little bit and price it and do some scenario type pricing. Now, when you, to retrieve information from our database, um, we need two bits of information. One is, is the farm brand and the other is the class's stencil as a way of validating that uh, you, you know who classed the wool. Um, so it can't that information can't be retrieved by others inappropriately. So that's for information that currently exists on our on our, on our databases. The other approach is simply to manually enter the test results um, on the information about a, a line of wool, and it could be multiple lines, and just enter each of that each each piece of test information and AWIX ID information separately, and price the lot uh, in that form. Now that takes a little bit more data entry, but it is 
um, for small numbers of lots, quite a quite a quick, easy way of of uh, using the system. Now I'm going to take you through the, how this is done shortly. So let's run through how we use WoolCheck in an operational sense. Through your web browser, it's um, simply a matter of typing in www.woolcheck.com.au. That will land you on a uh, an AWI um, web page. It will look similar to the screen in front of you. And there will be a link saying click here to price your wool. Once you've clicked on that wool check, um, we will, uh, the, it will take you to the wool check um, tool itself which um, will offer you some options. There will be on the left hand side a series of higher level option, options but the four that you will need to use for pricing will appear as you can see on your, your screen. One is finding auction lots where you enter your brand and class of speci uh, details. That's where we are retrieving information from our database. The start new worksheet option is where uh, you may be starting from scratch and you enter in each uh, the detail on each line manually. Third option is opening a saved worksheet. So this is where you may have um, previously priced some wool and you've saved saved that information and you wish to reload it and reprice it. And finally, sample worksheets. Now, the sample worksheets option, um, even coming out of today, I would recommend that every user start with the sample worksheets. Simply because it's, a, it's an excellent area that, um, that, a, that a, a three, there are three clips, um, an 18, a 21 and a 23 micron clip and simply click on either any of the clips where, where there are preloaded lots which are fictional lots but they allow you to um, do some pricing, uh, add, add new information, modify information and, uh, and use all the tools in, in a test area so you won't, it's, it's information that you won't damage, you won't hurt the system, it's really an area that lets you explore how to use it before you move into your own, own wall. So let's start with finding auction lots, which is the first auction option where we um, need to retrieve information from the AWIX databases. All that's required is the brand, and you can see on the screen in front of you we've put in the word fair, and we only need three characters. Uh, if if um, it's not essential that the full brand be typed in. Uh, the more information you can supply, the, the better, but uh, if you start with the first three or four characters and then the stencil number that uh, of the class of that's class the wool, um, that's enough for us to retrieve uh, the lot information from our databases. Sometimes a, a, a clip will be classed by multiple classes over a period of time and as you can see um, here in the middle of the screen it's possible to enter up to three classes stencils. It's also possible to put a date range, um, a start to an end date and typically though um, a user will end will enter a 12 month period and usually the last 12 months as a, as a typical indication. It's possible to retrieve everything in, within that selection or 
at the bottom there's a there's an option to s select unsold wool only. So that might be, for example, if you had pri uh, lots offered for sale and they were passed in. So if you currently had lots that have been offered that were passed in, it's possible to retrieve just those lots, reprice them, um, do a couple of scenarios with them and get a current market value, for want of a better term, or current market estimate on the past in lots. Now, it's, there, there are some lots that can't be retrieved pre-sale, um, but all lots can be retrieved post-sale. Let's just have a look at the next option, option now, which is the manual entry of a lot. So this is option two, where the user enters information um, on a lot by lot basis. Um, as you can see, this this is um, where you need to move around the screen a bit. And I'll just run through the, the three areas, marked one, two, and three. The worksheet here, because you're entering information, it, it's useful to enter the brand. Just, just for your reference, because it's also when you're saving, uh, if you wish to save this at a later stage. So if the brand is Green Hills, just simply type in Green Hills here in the brand area. We then can nominate how many lots we want to add. So I'm, I'm now sort of hovering around that, that area with a number two next to it. So if it's just a single lot that you wish to price, um, it's, there's no need to add more lots. And that's in terms of the grid. If you look further down, um, that's the grid where we enter each lot information. And moving into that area, now you can see uh, sort of an arrow sequence there. What we would recommend, the easiest way to enter this information is just to tab, to put your mouse in the first screen, which is description, and, and, and you can see up here is the header, uh, the title of each of the boxes. So this first box here on the top left-hand side is the description, so you may enter 3am for one of a better, dis uh, better uh, description. The number of bales is underneath here. So it might be six bales of 3 a.m. A greasy weight, the micron, the mean fibre diameter, the, the vegetable matter content, the yield, which will be a slum dry yield, which is typically the standard one supplied to you by your uh, wholesaling broker on, on the account sales or pre-sale valuations. We have the staple length, staple strength, and the mid-break, and some AWICS ID information here, which is a prime type, and uh, they're all drop-down boxes where you slip, uh, select from the list. So that's a um, the wool category here, which is displaying the default is MF for merino fleece, and obviously there are others there, such as crossbred fleece or merino pieces, merino bellies, and so forth. It's not essential that you know AWEX ID in great detail, but the more you do know, the more information that you can supply. Excuse me, now, David. The, yes, yes, Nicole. Sorry, David. Just just while you're on this slide, um, mm -hmm. we do have a question from the audience, and it's about when you're entering the data into here. It's a real pain to delete the default zero and then type yep. in the measurement. Do you know if there's any quick way of, of yeah, look, you know, you, getting around that? Yeah, you you don't need to delete the zeros. If you tab to each screen and type in the number, it will overwrite the zeros. So it's not necessary to clear the zeros. If you tab, if you click in the, the first box for argument's sake and tab to each one and type type in the enter the number. So for example, if description is 3 a.m. and you tab to the bales, if you do enter the six, the number six, it will over over type the zero. So it's not necessary to clear the zeros you can overtype, it will overtype them. So that would be my recommendation on how to use this. Thank you. So 
it's possible to, and, and look, it, and in part that might uh, depend a little bit on whether your insert key is on or off, and that might be worth checking. But uh, in my experience, it's not necessary to, to clear the zero or back over the zero. It's possible just to overtype the zero with the number that you wish to enter. Okay. Um, now the AWEX ID field, which is the non-measured characteristics, we we only ask for the wool category, which is the MF box here. Uh, if you're able to see my mouse moving, a style, and then we ask if you wish to enter any qualifiers. Uh, from time to time, we we get a question about uh, vegetable matter. Why? Why do we not ask for a vegetable matter type, for example, Shiv or Burr or Nagura? And that's that's a valid question. We, at the time when we were doing the design work, we opted for simplicity, um, trying to strike the balance between giving enough information um, without making the system too complicated. So. Uh, yes, is is the vegetable matter type, for example, important? Uh, burr versus seed versus hardheads uh, or shiv? Well, yes, it is. It does vary from type to type. Um, we also formed a view that in higher VM types, the other the, the amount of VM itself would be the key driver rather than the VM type, but. Ultimately, it was settled that it was it was more in the interest of simplicity and not adding VM type as another factor, uh, largely for the user, for the benefit of the user. Um, it's certainly able to be, you know, I mean, we we certainly calculate those values that are on our premium and discount sheets every week. So it is it is um, a useful field, but it also does make it one step more complicated for the user. So uh, that does come up um, from time to time. So if we were to, we've looked at the, the, the manual grid here where we're manually entering a line. If we wish to add a lot, um, we simply come up to the, um, um, up to the top right hand of the screen, click add another lot and that will insert a new line. I'm just uh, scrolling to that now. Ah, there we are. And here we are. It's a a new line has been inserted above uh, the previous lines that were on the page. So regardless of if you've retrieved lots from our database or entered them manually, it's it's straightforward enough to add new lots should you choose to do so and it's the same process. You you enter the each of the fields in manually, um, and that will accept a new lot. If uh, you are looking to edit any lot, and this is again, if you were say retrieving information from your uh, previous offer history in the auction, it's possible to retrieve all the lots. And let's say you retrieve ten lots, and you wanted to adjust the micron on each line just to allow for, um, uh, you know, the seasonal. Um, effects, then it's simply a matter of clicking edit um, that is that would be where the number two is on this particular screen. It allows you to edit the field and as you can then see on, on the far right hand side where the two is, you can apply that change or cancel the change. So it's possible to edit a field. Now that's not changing information on our databases by any means, it's simply in the view that you're seeing. So whether you retrieve information, it doesn't mean that that's the way it has to be. You can modify it to, as I say, build 
new scenarios if you choose. And um, um, to to let you price price the lots in in any way that you you wish. So now we come to the the main game, I guess, which is pricing the wool itself. So we've 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 selected the lots that we wish to price, and that's either a by retrieving it from our databases, which is previous previous wool that's been offered, or the users entered in their own lot data and now we come to the pricing process itself and this is um, um, where it starts to get more interesting I guess is where we get the results. There are three, pr three pricing steps. Um, if you can see the screen in front of you there, the number one is the, it's the price schedule that you wish to use. So for, uh, we have north, south and west. So if it's a western region clip then the region to be pri you would use the western schedules, the price schedules. If it's a northern region clip, which is uh, using our price schedules based on the Sydney markets, then uh, you would cho choose the northern region pricing schedule. And if it was, uh, if you're looking at wool coming, uh, being offered in Melbourne, you would use the southern region pricing schedule. Um, for the audience here today, um, it's possible that uh, north and south would be the most likely to be chosen. Then it's just a matter of picking what sort of pricing type, uh, what sort of pricing period that you wish to use. Daily means a spot market. So in other words, it's on the current pricing schedule. Uh, the other options are using a one month average, a two month average or a 12 month average. And it's really a matter of what sort of price, you know, how much um, variability you want in the price, um, or how much input you want in terms of finalising the price on each lot. Once those two uh, variables have been selected, it's sim then simply a matter of clicking on the calculate price button. It's just a simple click there, and that will send the information that you have uh, on your grid back to the AWEX um, servers where it will retrieve, uh, look at the, the pricing schedules and retrieve uh, a number. And this is how it will display on the screen. So these are the four lots that we have on our grid and the prices that will um, appear will be a greasy price and in the square box there um, it's just using to highlight the prices on this particular line of wool. The greasy price is 836 cents per kilo. The clean price, the clean price on this particular lot is 11.94 cents per kilogram. The extended value of that lot, um, price, uh, you know, the cents per kilo by by weight, which we've specified over in the left-hand side here earlier on, 1,800 greasy kilos, is a fifteen touch over fifteen thousand dollars for that particular line of wool. Now, those the clean price there is based on a Schlum dry yield, and that's uh, a, as I mentioned before, that's typically the yield used um, or supplied by most brokers on their documentation on lots. Are there any questions on on that on that particular pricing area? David, it's Noel at MC speaking. Um, yes, one of the questions that I had was um, some of the lots for my wool, in particular, which is fine wool, uh, are very thin, and the pricing information that's available there's not many comparable lots being sold in Australia. So yep. I use the daily price period, uh, but mm -hmm. is there any way that I can draw? more wool out of the system so I can get a better price for that those fine wool lines? Well, within, within wool check now, um, the options are to broaden the price period, um, say to a one or two month average, and unfortunately with every, with all thin data, it, it becomes harder for everybody. Um, 
to arrive at a number, and that, that and that's the buyer and the broker and AWEX. Um, the thinner the type of wool, the less frequent it is. It's it's often not costed on the standard on the standard brame and and can actually go in all sorts of directions, which often makes them more variable in price. But but having said that, fine wool in itself is you know, there's there's usually um, adequate quantities of fine wool um, as opposed to rare types of wool um, to draw some conclusions. I think, Noel, what, what I would recommend is to perhaps broaden out the price period a little bit and then to use the similar lots function which I'm going to talk to um, next to see what is around, you know, what is around, um, unfortunately on those less frequent types you have to look at wool that's similar and around to sort of draw the draw the surface and come up with a, an indicative price. If it's, um, I think that within the extent of wool clip, that's as far as we can go. Um, then it becomes a matter of either talking to AWEX directly or or your or your broker and more information to you know to really do some deeper um, mining to try and get an idea of what the the market is, how the market is treating that sort of wool. Let me just move on to um, the similar lots function, and over on the right hand side here, uh, you can see some tools options. One is titled sim dot lots, and the other is price chart. Now, for the very reasons that um, Noel has mentioned is that um, at the end of the day the AWEX price pricing tool will come up with a number and if if it's a an area in the market that's quite thin um, the user may want to say well look I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that number I, I'd like to dig a bit deeper and see what what's what's happening in the market for similar lots of wool so this is where um, in WoolCheck against each of these lines of wool, if you click the similar lots option, it goes directly to our catalog history systems and retrieves similar lots of wool. And this is a, a sample screen here of, of the second lot on that grid. And at the top of the screen, um, that's that's the lot. Oh, I'm sorry, I've just bounced around there. Well, just bear with me. I've seemed to have jumped to the end of the slide. Sorry, just bear with me. Okay. Very sorry. I've just. Managed to lose my spot somehow. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, at the top of the screen is the is the lot that we selected to show similar information, and at the in the bottom grid, that has trawled our 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 catalog history systems to show similar lots of wool and you know, I've managed to sorry about this and the red box there these each of these uh, lines in this grid represents an, a, a real lot in the auction system so that's that's an actual transaction within the auction system so in terms of the AWEX clean price on the on the in the top grid, gives you our estimate estimated uh, price on the line of wool. It's possible now for the user to run run their eye down the similar lots grid and see the range of prices that exist for similar lines of wool. So, and it's possible to modify that that similar lots area 
by region. As, if you can see my mouse there, um, that's all regions. But if you're only looking for northern region or south, southern region or western region, that can be selected. And for areas that are very thin, um, it's possible to vary the, the similar lot range. And here we have uh, tight, medium, or loose. So if if it's a reasonably common type of wool, uh, fairly straightforward type where there's uh, good numbers offered, then the tighter the specification range, it means it narrows it down, um, it narrows down the range to be very close to the lot that you want it priced, um, all the way out to a loose specification where the micron range is spread, the VM range is, is wider, the yield range is wider as is the length and the strength. So, um, Noel, to ask your question, this is one way of going out a bit wider on your on your specs um, to see how far, you know, it's, it's it, in terms of looking around the type of wool that you have to see um, to see if there's anything similar, you know, in a more broader sense. Um, so this similar lots area is um, it's 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 quite powerful. It's looking at the last thirty days. Um, we also. Um, this this particular functionality it's one of our more common um, services that we provide to brokers within um, from our market information systems so they will often look at catalogs themselves with something similar um, in terms of similar lots to assist them try to narrow down what they think the value of the wool is worth as well so it's quite a useful tool um, and uh, I think it's one of the strengths of the um, wool check system because it allows you to say, well, look, AWEX, they might be, um, you know, or let me put it this way, the, the calculated price, that's one number, but I'd like to see what else is happening around the market. So it, it, it can either give you um, increased confidence about the estimated number, or if you're looking at the similar lots underneath it, you can say, well, look, the prices are really all over the shop. Um, there's a lot more going in there going on there, I should say, than the one number that's been calculated against a lot. And um, pricing is is hard. Um, it's not an easy process, and anyone that's uh, had a crack at trying to price a whole catalog would know that that's not, um, you know, it, it's not an easy process. And um, uh, it's the, the more information that you can get to to support the price that you come up with, the, the more confident you can be in it. I would add that um, the, uh, the analysts that uh, populate the price, uh, the price charts, the price schedules are instructed to price at market. So it is their best view about what the current market is. So it won't be, um, so what that, what that means is that um, There'll be times when they'll be higher than the realised price, and there'll be times when they're lower than the realised price at that point in time. So, it's there's not a a margin built into the price. They they their instruction is to price at market. So, let's have a look at um, one of the other tools. We've looked at the price, uh, the similar lots function. Let's have a look at the price charts function now. So we've come back to the grid. And the tools, uh, coming back to the tools option over here against each line, we can see the sim dot lots, and then underneath it is the price chart. So the price chart for each, uh, if you click it for each, whichever lot that you are particularly interested in, um, click that, and it will go back to all the stored schedules and recalculate against every stored schedule the specs on that lot and we'll display that in a time series over the last 12 months. So this is an example from our database yesterday. Uh, sorry, from you know, looking, this is, yes, looking at this particular specs of this lot over the last 12 months. 
So it gives you an indication of how the market has travelled on, on the specs for that particular lot. So this is not the Eastern Market Indicator or the 22 Micron Indicators. This is our price schedule over that period of time. So it allows you to follow um, follow how the market has travelled for that particular line of ball. The other option, uh, the other bit of information that's available to um, the user in Woolclip is to be able to have a look at the underlying premiums and discounts, or, or the adjustments that's made to the bus base price. So, the screen in front of us now, um, it's it's the standard grid. We, um, if we cast our eyes up to the top right hand side, there's a red box there saying. Um, you know, show calculation. If we click on that show calculation box, and just just for simplicity on this presentation, um, we've just isolated it to one lot. You can see the um, adjustments that have been made on that particular line of wall. So that's a line of merino pieces, um, and there's been an adjustment there for VM and of six cents, and there's been an adjustment um, uh, of 11 cents as well. Sorry, I'm just my mouse is playing up here. So the base price, if you look at the base price of 10, the clean over there, the base price is 10.57. So it's possible for you to have a look at the, um, the calculations that have gone on behind, uh, behind the calculation. The other function that's available is the averages and totals function, and so as you, if you in the grade area at the top, there are the four the four lines that we had in our grid that we priced in a previous screen, and at the bottom of the page is the averages and totals um, averages and totals screen, and. The cal these calculations uh, for these four lots, the 10 bales of 3 a.m. on the first lot, 10 bales of 3 a.m. for the second lot, 5 bales of 3 a.m. for the third lot, and 5 bales of merino pieces on the fourth lot. Um, if you wanted to model these averages and totals um, without one or more of these lots, simply click on those uh, tick boxes there, which is the inclusion uh, box. If you wish to um, remove the five bales of pieces out of the calculation, simply deselect that box and those values at the bottom will recalculate. So this particular five bale, these five, sorry, this, these four lines below us, I'm sorry I'm just flicking a bit here, um, as you can see, the fleece, there's a total of 4,500 greasy kilos, 22.3 micron. Um, and the average, coming over to the pricing area, the average greasy is 8.23 for 11.76 clean for a, a total value of 30, attached over $37,000. We also model FPB underneath it, which is fleece pieces bellies. Um, now, if you had a line of locks in that uh, in that top grid, then that would be ignored in that calculation. And then the bottom, uh, the bottom where it says all um, at the base of the screen here, that's um, calculating all all lots in the grid above, which is the four lots above us, which is uh, forty two and a half thousand, a bit over forty two and a half thousand dollars. Um, over in the right hand side, so that what um, what we can see um, um, similar to the single lot price chart, over in the right hand side there's an option that says price clip, uh, sorry, which is the um, price chart for the clip, and if if that is clicked, then that will model the clip over a period of time. So it's very similar to the lot, the profile of the um, 
of the single lot grid uh, uh, chart, but this is looking at all of the lots in that grid and uh, pro plots the value of, of those over the last 12 months. So we've done some plotting and charting and pricing and possibly even some modifications to some of the lots, um, may have even added all the lots from scratch and so there's a bit of investment in time that's gone in so far and as a user you may wish to save all of that information. So there is a save option at the top of the screen and it's possible to save a worksheet as, a, as an AWI format or as a CSV format. Now if it's an AWI format, what that will allow you to do, um, what that allows you to do is to save it to your uh, local machine, your local PC or laptop. You're not able to edit that file but you are able to reload it and use it again. The other option is to save it, the, uh, the output as a CSV. So that is saved as a CSV file. Um, and you can manipulate that in Excel or open that in Excel or some other form, but you cannot reload it back into the system. So you have a choice of two, two options there. You can, you can certainly save it uh, both ways if you choose, um, depending on, on whether you want to retrieve the information back into, into um, WorkCheck. So I'm just illustrating here uh, how to retrieve a, uh, something that's already been saved is you, from the option screens, you get a open a saved worksheet option, simply locate the file on your PC and it will repopulate the, um, the grid. And you could uh, reprice it, um, uh, manipulate it as, as you see fit. Um, and that covers really the, the decision tool itself, the uh, uh, decision support tool itself as to you know, how to use it. Um, like most decision support tools, the, the more you use it, um, the more you understand how it behaves. Um, it, um, it is a good tool, it does give you enough information to, to verify what's been given in front of you, it allows you to um, look at our, the, the catalogue transaction system which, which can give you some confidence in terms of what the current market estimate on your, on your wall is. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't forecast, there's one thing it doesn't do, it doesn't forecast, um, it is certainly based on history and, and, and current information, um, so it's not a forecasting tool but it can certainly be uh, a useful input if you are looking to um, uh, get third party, you know, third party input into your current market value of your wool. Um, just in terms of um, one common question that we do get is, is it possible for me to call up my neighbours, uh, my neighbours wool? and look at the prices that he has um, received at auction? Um, well, the answer is no, you can't. We don't publish a, um, a price against any transaction that is identifiable. So on the similar lots area, for example, it's not possible to identify who's whose wool that is. We don't supply any lot information or any uh, information identifying the source of that wool. Um, and likewise, when um, if you retrieve a clip from our catalog history systems, the price against it is from the AWEX pricing schedules. It is not the price realised at auction. So um, we've been uh, very careful to make sure that um, we're not revealing information inappropriately. Um, it can be a sensitive area and we've taken as many steps as we can to make sure that that's handled. Um, uh, trying to deliver the benefit without um, 
without restricting it um, to the point where it can't be used. Now, um, in terms of support, we'll check is supported. It's certainly possible to, to contact AWI or, or, or AWEX. Um, uh, there's certainly a wool check email, just wool check at awex.com.au um, or you can call 02-9428-6136 and um, um, we're able to help you with any, any questions that you have with, um, with wool check. So, Nicole, that's, that's probably all I have at the moment. If, if there are any questions, I'm happy to Thank take you, them. David. Thanks. So we'd like to spend the next five or ten minutes just answering any of the questions that you may have about value, valuing your wool and using wool check to help you do this. So while you're thinking about some of the questions you might like to ask or typing them into the question box, I'd just like to remind you to fill out our short survey to give us some feedback on this event and, and what you might like to hear about from Leading Sheep in the future. You can either click on the link in the, in the question box that I've put in there or you should now have an email sitting in your inbox uh, with the survey in it. Also, if you want to know about any of the other events we have coming up, please visit our website, which is leadingsheep.com.au. So, yes, David, we do have a, a few questions that have been typed in here. So, firstly, we've had someone who's brought up their last year's clip, and mm -hmm. in the qualifiers there is an E. But when you go to edit the lot, the drop down does not have an E or an S, which can be critical when pricing your wool. Could you comment on that? Uh, when it's been retrieved, there's an E or an S. The E or S is the is the vegetable matter type. Um, e being um, uh, seed, and the S being shiv. Um, as I, as I mentioned before, those two are not available for uh, the user to to enter into the system. So, um, and that and that's a design that was the design decision at the time was uh, not to include that information as part of the pricing tool. So, yes, the VM type is is part of AWIX ID. Um, being E or S or B or N, um, just to rattle off four of them, but it's again it was in the interest of, of keeping it simple that we elected not to put those in. Thank you. Another question we have is, do the prices take into consideration lot size? Smaller lots usually bring a lower price than some larger lots of the same type. How is this calculated? Uh, yes, yes, there is a premium and discount schedule based on the size of the line. So, for very large lines, there will be a discount. Um, there will be a discount applied. So, um, now I'm sorry, I can't I can't rattle off what what they are just on the spot. But for example, if it was a, a 20 bale line or 25 bale line, for argument's sake, and, and look, this will vary. According to the sector, as to whether it's a super fine wool or a, or a mainstream merino wool, there 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 are points where it's deemed to be. You know, it will not necessarily attract as much attention from the trade because the line size is 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 getting too large for some buyers to handle. But obviously, that's that can change in market conditions. It's not there all the time. But uh, yes, our schedules do include a factor for line size. Another question we have, which follows on from um, when you were talking about, you know, can I look up my neighbour's wall? Um, there's a yep. comment here saying that you can look at the clip details if you know the classer. Could you comment uh, on that? Yes, look, you can. That's that's true. You can and. Um, but you can't work out his income. I guess is where I was, the position I was taking. Yes, if you, if you know the stencil of the classer uh, and the brand, it is possible to retrieve the technical information about that clip. Um, it, um, I guess, we have taken the view there that that is not 
a long way removed from being at the auction and picking up a catalogue and being able to see the same information. Thanks, David. Um, that's all the questions that have come in to me. I might hand over to Noel uh, because he has some questions as well. David, I think you answered one of them. It was a question about uh, can I use uh, um, wall check at the moment for um, future pricing or forward pricing. Um, mm -hmm. I think you said no, that's correct. Uh, that's right. It's not a forecasting tool, no. It's based on current and previous price schedules or, or current or previous auctions. So it's not a, it's not a forecasting tool um, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't incorporate uh, other information such as uh, uh, non-auction information such as, say, futures type information. So it is simply based on the spot market price at auction or previous market prices at auction. Uh, Noel again. Um, in discussions with AWI and with us today, we have Alan Wang. Uh, mm -hmm. Alan's been charged with actually building that facility into WallCheck or trying mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. using Wall Forward. So, so that's something for the future. And uh, Alan and I are in discussion, and when that facility is available, uh, we'll organise a future webinar so people are aware of how it works and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Alan, if you're online um, and I've said something wrong, please correct me. Since there's silence, I must be right. Um, <laughs> I guess we did uh, we did look at that in the original design, Noel. Um, uh, I guess it's really a case of the inputs and in terms of whether that was the you know I, I guess from AWEX's point of view and as as the back end provider of the auction and the pricing schedules, um, we I guess it's really a case of how you source that information and where it comes from um, and. Futures, you know, futures information, the liquidity of that comes and goes a bit. And um, if you're talking about futures versus modelling, you know, predicted modelling based on historical modelling, I guess there's two sorts of ways of looking at um, forecasting. One is predicted based on, you know, on a number number of other inputs as opposed to taking a lead from uh, futures contracts, which is a market. Uh, a market view about where the market might go, and um, so I guess mm, there's 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 a number of approaches there, and um, I guess it's really a case of which approach um, AWI might wish to go on those. I guess. Hi, David. Just on that note, just um, uh, go with the forward side of things rather than futures. Um, looking at forward side, rather than actually building something that looks into it, we thought uh, maybe for the growers and for um, the brokers and other uh, participants in, in their benefit is to have something that they are capable of entering their own numbers rather than say uh, they want to enter uh, 12,000 cents or 13,000 cents and be able to produce something. So uh, maybe along with the, those lines, producing something uh, almost like a what-if um, scenario or a tap. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, Alan, I guess, um, so I wasn't, I'm still not quite very clear on what you're, what you're proposing there, but um, um, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll look forward with interest to see what uh, see how, what you come up with there. Yeah. Thanks. Noel here again. It's a question about the entering the other lot. I received this prior to the webinar, and I, I suspect that you've uh, answered it. Um, to add extra lots, you can um, you can specify the number and just uh, hit the add a lot. That's correct. That's right. No. Yes. Yep. And they 
they are added at the top of the um, of the at worksheet. That's correct. Uh, that's my recollection. No. Yep. Yeah. Well, that was a um, the comment was made by some people when they rang me with the comment. Um, if you're working through your uh, catalog uh, mm -hmm. and you're entering the data sequentially, you actually end up with wool from the end of the catalog on At top, top, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a yeah. pain. Their question right. was, is there any way that we can fix that up and take those lines back down to where they should be so that you know, you're not confusing the prices by having uh, some walls at the top from the end of the sale and then the walls from the beginning of the sale uh, down the bottom. Uh, look, I wouldn't have thought that that would be too difficult, no. Um, happy to take that on board. Um, we'd have to talk to AWA as to whether that's something they would like done, but uh, I, you know, conceptually I have no issue with that. That would be um, that would be useful to do. Yep. Okay, well that that was just the question, could it be done? At the moment it can't, but you may look into it. Uh, yeah, I, look, my recollection is it inserts a new lot at the top of the grid. Um, having said that, I don't think programmatically it's difficult to, you know, insert them at the bottom of the grid instead. But that that's that would be a, you know, a modification. Um, uh, I wouldn't have thought a very difficult one, but uh, as it stands, no, the, the user can't control that process. No. Okay, I've exhausted my questions. Back to you, Nicole, and thank you, David, and thank you, Ellen, for coming in with that comment. Thanks, Noel. I do have uh, two more final questions that have come in, and um, one is about um, and I can't remember either. So, did you cover using uh, wool check price estimation as reserve? About whether it should be used as a reserve? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Um, look, setting reserves needs to be. Um, uh, settings, settings of reserves needs to be done in consultation with the wool selling broker. Um, the advice of the broker is, uh, and I, I mentioned this before, uh, early on, is 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 a is a very important part of, of marketing growers' wool clip. I think this is. Uh, uh, I certainly wouldn't. Um, I'd use it as an input in terms of setting a reserve, and uh, certainly it's complementary to the broker's advice. Um, as I say, we. We try to price it at the market, um, and of course markets can come and go and change, and um, and sometimes, as I say, with pricing, it's it's simply not possible to get cent perfect on valuating valuing wool. Um, you know, today's market is today's, tomorrow's market is something completely different, um, which may be the same, or it may be dearer, or maybe cheaper. I mean, markets move, so something that's worth six hundred cents today. Uh, in terms of saying, well, set that as a reserve on the lot, look, I, I would be cautious about saying that's the advice, uh, that's the approach you should take. You should certainly feed it into your input in terms of consultation with the brokers, <coughs> your broker advisor. Um, they may be aware of something happening in the market, or you know, they 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 have a facility there to do that, and we also. Um, you know, for the times, you know, if you if you if you're studying our models of the price schedules about, uh, you know, when you're trying to hit the market, you know, at market value, there's almost an equal number of times when you're slightly over it as opposed to slightly under it, and occasionally you're well over it, and occasionally you're well under it, um, you know, in the normal distribution. So we the wool check itself may say 600 cents as a as a price estimate. I think you need to, you know, to get confidence in that 600 cents, you need to look at the live transactions, which is the similar lots routine. You um, certainly need to get an understanding from from your advisor as to what, the, you know, what direction the market is travelling, or whether there's an oversupply or undersupply. And these things are not handled by wool check. You know, if it's a, you know, if it's a 60,000 bale week in the market, um, you know, a very big market. Um, 
you know, the broker may be, may well, may well be assessing that this is a, going to be a difficult market to sell into. So, six hundred cents in isolation, as 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 you know, as as a number calculated by Woolcheck uh, as the reserve, uh, unless you're prepared to uh, accept that it might be over the over the market um, and where the risks in that, um, then I would suggest Woolcheck is setting a reserve, certainly not in isolation. It needs other inputs to form a view about what reserve you should be should be setting. Thanks, David. Final question, and, it, and it's going back to the privacy thing again. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know if someone else has been looking at your or the, or the class's um, results? Sorry, does does who know? Do, do, does AWEX know personally, or or so? I'm, I'm not. Could you just rephrase the question there, Nicole? Yep. So if I go in and check out someone else's or a class's um, wool clip on wool check, do they yep. get a message saying that someone else has been on there looking at it? Uh, no, no. But equally, if someone was at the show floor, they wouldn't be told. Likewise. Yep. So, uh, no, the classer is not informed um, if somebody is looking at the clip. Um, and I guess uh, this is uh, another design requirement uh, uh, that AWI asked for at the outset, and it was discussed at length, as to whether it should be uh, easy to access. Because um, I guess if somebody is, is looking at a clip, there's two ways of approaching this. One is that you have username and passwords, which requires a, a security system in its own right to identify who's looking at the wall. Or it's it's made semi-public domain, um, where any user can have a look at it, but needs to know enough information um, to um, that it's not completely open slather. So if you're retrieving lots from our catalogue systems, okay, you do need to know the brand, the farm brand, and you need to know the class of who classed it and specifically their stencil number. Now, in our view, that's a relatively small number of, of people that would know that information at any point in time. And when they do retrieve that information, really it's the technical information that they're seeing, which by and large is available in a sale catalogue um, if you're attending the uh, the sale room. So, look, it's a, it's a judgment call on that one. Um, we it hasn't created, um, to my knowledge, any large issues in the past. Um, and uh, I guess we we that's the line that we take on that. Thank you, David. Just one final question. Um, so I'll just unmute David Council so he can ask his question. Go ahead, uh, David. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Yeah, no, David, I just, I, I just have a problem with the, the privacy thing. I mean, a sale catalogue, sure, you can go and look up some of it. Sale catalogues that hard to read that, and they're so uh, relatively unavailable, whereas this, you know, the, the class that goes from place to place to place, you can go and have a look at a lot of other people's what I regard as fairly private information. I just, to me, I just see mm -hmm. that as a, as a big issue. But, but as you say, you can go and find that out about those people by getting the sale catalog. So that's more just a comment. The the other the yep. question I, I came in late, so I apologise if you've handled this. But when you do that, bring up all the wool that you've, you've got available for sale this year to price it all. Um, yep. How come some lines don't come up, or a lot of lines for me don't come up? Um. Well, David, I'd probably have to look into the specifics of what they are um, and, and what time that you're looking at them. Um, I guess if I, if I could go back to your first comment um, about accessing the information, I, I guess really where we're coming from there is, is we're weighing up what we think is the benefit to the community against the cost in terms of making access to that information. And as I say, if you if you want wool check style functionality, um, unless we set up everybody with a user and username and password, um, that's the only way that we would be able to lock it down completely. And 
um, you know, most will, most of us deal with enough usernames and passwords now, and struggle to remember them with them all. Um, is to implement another one. So I guess it's a trade-off, David. Is to I, yeah. I accept your I accept your your view about look. Can somebody look at it? Well, yes, they can. But it's uh, okay. Instead, in, in a public catalogue, I accept your comments there. But I guess we would say it's quasi public, in the sense that it's not secret um, information. Um, but uh, you know, I accept your comment, and, and we'll get views either side of the ledger on this one. Um, yeah, yeah, but I don't think there's much in it. It's just a view, isn't it, really? Um, well, it's, we, we, we're very yeah. conscious of it, and I guess we're, we're just sort of uh, testing the market on it, and, and at the moment it seems to be okay. Uh, but it's a tr it, we understand that it can be sensitive for some people sometime. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. In terms of the other area about if your lots are not appearing, um, I think what you need to do is give us a call so we can diagnose what's going on there. Because um, by and large, they they should be appearing on there. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, David. Um, given that we're over time now, we might wrap the questions up. As David just said, if you do have any other questions about wool check, um, David's email address will be on that is on that follow up email that I've just sent with the link to the evaluation. So uh, please direct any further questions to him. Um, so thank you, um, David. I might just hand back to you quickly just for um, a quick wrap up and and maybe um, the two key points I guess that you wanted to get across about. Um, wool check and, and valuing your wool. Sure, thanks, thanks, Nicole. Firstly, uh, thank thank you everyone for today, and thanks for bearing with me as I sort of mumbled my way through this presentation. It's it's a new one for me and a first time on a webinar, and it's uh, certainly um, uh, different not having, standing in front of an audience. But it's, it's, so that's a bit of a new experience for me. So next time round, I'll certainly be a little better on this. The um, the topic today is confidently pricing your wool using wool clip. Uh, sorry, using wool check. Um, as a tool, it certainly offers the user a facility to to uh, calculate independent pricing. It certainly gives the user a way of validating that independent price using similar lots. Uh, functionality that you can you can cross check and verify for yourself as to whether that number is good or robust or or thin you know and there are thin areas of the market that simply you know privately anyone might say well look it's anyone's guess what that wool will bring on some some types of wool um, uh, but it does give you access to the market if if it is uh, and particularly with the in the wool grower area it's not always possible to know what a what a thin market is, and you know even just to give you a, a quick example, um, you know there has been days in the market when Australia wide we've had you know less than 40 lots of locks offered around the country, and um, you know if we randomly surveyed a lot of wool growers, they would probably say, oh, there'd be heaps of them every day. Well, actually sometimes there's just not, um, and the market is much smaller. Uh, sorry, the, the offerings now are much smaller than they were, no surprise there, uh, to 10 years ago. So pricing becomes, um, you know, confidence in pricing comes with the depth of the market. So the bigger the market, the more confident we can all be. So all I can um, offer to you in, is that WoolCheck is, is a, it's a good tool, it's a useful tool. If you invest some time in it, uh, you'll certainly get some benefit out of it. And by all means, um, make sure that anything you get out of wool check, um, make sure you validate that against uh, other inputs, such as uh, information from your, your wool selling broker. Um, and by all means, uh, speak to AWI, speak to AWEX. Um, you know there are resources there to, to give you as much advice as as, as you can uh, as you can stomach, I guess. So, um, and on that note, um, I think I'll finish up on that. Uh, thanks, Nicole.
Thanks, David. So thank you once again to David Kofer from AWEX for doing an excellent job at such short notice in giving us a run through of a wall check and valuing your wall. Thank you also to uh, a few of our um, wool brokers who participated today from Australian Wool Network, Landmark and Alan Wang from Australian Wool Innovation. Thanks must also go to our funders for this webinar, um, which was brought to you by Leading Sheep, partnership between the Queensland Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry, Australian Wool Innovation and ACORS. And thank you also to you, our audience, for participating and asking so many great questions. As I said before, if you want to find out more information, visit the Leading Sheep website. That's where um, hopefully by tomorrow the recording of this webinar will be posted. Or you can go to woolcheck.com.au or alternatively contact your local wool broker. Please don't forget to complete our evaluation. Your feedback is very important to us and it only takes a few minutes to complete. So once again, either click on the link in the question box or it should be in your inbox now waiting for you to complete. And just finally, there we have a few um, upcoming events that I'd like to tell you about. One of those which is on Monday, it's another webinar at 1 o'clock, the Good Food Guide for Sheep webinar. Desiree Jackson is presenting that webinar, so come along to that one and, and find out a bit of information about some of the different feeds you can feed your sheep, their advantages and disadvantages. On Friday the 19th of April up at Longreach, uh, there's a, a What Drives Your Business forum followed by a dinner which is being presented by Phil Holmes. Wednesday the 24th of April at 1pm, we're planning a nutritional management of spring lambing used to rear more lambs webinar and that's with Dr John Milton from University of Western Australia and Desiree Jackson. And then also to be confirmed, we're planning a couple of nutrition and condition scoring field days in the Bolland, Kanamala, Wyandra, Sarzo areas. So to find out more about any of the events, just go to leadingsheep.com.au and that's where they'll get posted and you can also register for those events on the site as well. So thank you once again and I hope to see you on Monday's webinar, The Good Food Guide for Sheep. Thank you and goodbye.